Michael Avenatti, the man Tucker Carlson christened creepy porn lawyer, Michael Avenatti, the guy who uh, not only uh, has been representing Stormy Daniels in her assault on Donald Trump's presidency, but also uh, the woman Swetnick, who was kind of discredited uh, and sometimes uh, blamed for ruining the left's uh, assault on Brett Kavanaugh. Michael Avenatti was arrested, arrested by the LAPD yesterday and charged with beating up a woman and then shouting, she hit me first. <laughs> so, so all across America today, jokes are writing themselves. You know, with, with all, the, all the great employment news, all the jobs that uh, President Trump has created, I think there's one sector of the economy where jobs are kind of scarce, and that is jokes uh, about liberals, right? None of the none of the light night comedians will make them. None of the comedians on Netflix will make them. So there are long lines of, at the unemployment office of jokes about liberals uh, sitting around going, gee, we're, we're writing ourselves, but no one will hire us uh, and no one will use us. But this is, look, I, I think this is worth talking about. I really do. Everybody's burying the story for obvious reasons. I mean, the irony is so thick, it's almost not worth talking about. And yet it is worth talking about. And the important thing is, is I think the arrest of Michael Avenatti raises the following truly serious question. Can't you save us, Britney Spears? Can we be saved? God, why is Satan controlling the universe? <laughs> So <laughs> Juliet Lewis, Juliet Lewis on Instagram, can you save us Britney Spears? And then she said, why is Satan controlling the universe? And then she dances to the music of Britney Spears. Now, I don't know what she was on or whether that's just mental illness we're seeing. And at one level, I don't mean to make fun of her, but on another, that Instagram piece wins for me the Oscar for the first piece of Instagram video that qualifies as art. And I'm actually not kidding about this. The, here is a celebrity praying to a celebrity to save us while demonstrating what celebrities are in herself. Because Juliet Lewis is a celebrity. If you don't know her, she's an actress who's always playing, kind of used to play all these kind of sexy teens, you know, kind of alluring. And here she is appealing for salvation to Britney Spears, a celebrity, while demonstrating that celebrities are not always the people you want to turn to for life advice. I mean, look, I, I say this as a creative guy, a guy who has been in the arts my whole life. Art is not a healthy lifestyle. Making art is not a healthy lifestyle. I write about this in my book, The Great Good Thing, that you are constantly, constantly, and I, let me, let me say what I have to say first and then just put in a little bit of a proviso there. It, you are constantly opening old wounds to get at old feelings and old pain that you can put on the page or put into your performance as an actor. I mean, this is almost what acting is, is opening old wounds. It is not a healthy way to live, okay? And I, I don't say that. I want, what I want to point out is I'm not saying that, oh, it's what a heroic thing it is to be an artist. It's kind of a sick thing to be an artist. It could be argued that being an artist is a reaction to trauma. When people have trauma and they don't heal their trauma, they keep repeating the trauma over and over again. You've probably noticed this in yourself. Some little thing that you keep doing that you wish you stopped doing probably relates to some trauma in your early life. And what artists do is they're constantly, especially actors, more, more actors than writers, but writers also, they're constantly opening up these, these wounds that they have and bleeding onto the page or bleeding onto the screen. People like me, who, to whom it's important to be sane, work very hard to manage our sanity while we're doing this. Really, it really is a full-time effort. My wife and I have a joke about it because sometimes I'll come in after a particularly finishing a particularly hard book and I'll say, I'll never write another novel. And she says the same thing, it's dinner time, sit down and eat because she doesn't believe me because it's a kind of addiction. So all I'm saying is that celebrities are kind of crazy, okay? So when celebrities are telling you to do something or telling you to live in a certain way, you should be thinking, oh, look, there's a person on the street who's living in a homeless shelter who's screaming at the sky that the Venusians are talking through his teeth, giving me a piece of advice, accepting her or his Oscar, and then telling me who I should vote for. That's the way you should think of celebrities. And celebrity lawyer Michael Avenatti is no exception. Now, here's the story from TMZ. Now, you may laugh that people are quoting TMZ, and apparently Avenatti is shouting 
the TMZ should not be taken seriously. But in fact, they have excellent sources in the LAPD. Avenatti was arrested Wednesday after a woman filed a felony domestic violence report. Uh, we're told, this is TMZ speaking, we're told her face was swollen and bruised with red marks on both cheeks. Our sources say the alleged incident occurred Tuesday night, but there was another confrontation Wednesday between the two at an exclusive apartment building in the Century City area of L.A. We're told Wednesday afternoon the woman was on the sidewalk on her cell phone with sunglasses covering her eyes and covering the bruises, presumably sobbing and screaming on the phone. I can't believe you did this to me. I'm going to get a restraining order against you. It was originally reported that this was his estranged wife, but it wasn't. Uh, we're told, TMZ says, we're told security brought her inside the building, took her upstairs, and Michael showed up five minutes later and ran into the building. He screamed repeatedly, she hit me first. <laughs> she hit me first. And we're told he angrily added a bunch of uh, obscenities. This is bull. We're told he tried getting into the elevator, but security denied him access. The cops showed up. They talked to him for five to 10 minutes. Then they took him into custody and he was released on, uh, I think it was $50,000 bail. A law enforcement source says on Tuesday, Avenatti kicked the woman out of her the apartment. And that's when the alleged domestic violence occurred. And we're told she went back to the apartment on Wednesday to retrieve her belongings and call police to stand by in case things got heated. Now, this is it's important to note that this is a felony domestic violence, not a misdemeanor domestic violence, which means there were visible bruises and it, she had to file a report under penalty of perjury. So she signed a piece of paper saying this happened under penalty of perjury. perjury. But here, because we believe, of course, we believe in due process and we don't always believe all women, you know, even we don't believe survivors. We will let Avenatti have his say. Here's Avenatti's response. First of all, I want to thank the hardworking men and women of the LAPD for their professionalism and their work today. They had no option in light of the allegations. Secondly, I have never struck a woman. I never will strike a woman. I have been an advocate for women's rights my entire career, and I'm gonna to continue to be an advocate. I am not going to be intimidated from stopping what I am doing. I am a father to two beautiful, smart daughters. I would never disrespect them by touching a woman inappropriately or striking a woman. I am looking forward to a full investigation, at which point I am confident that I will be fully exonerated. I also want to thank everyone for their support that has reached out. You know my character. You know me as a man, and I appreciate it. <laughs> when Michael Avenatti comes forward and says he's been wrongly accused by a woman. The irony is thick on the ground, so thick you almost don't have to mention it. But important to remember, it's important to remember that this guy was part of an effort to push charges against Brett Kavanaugh for the political purposes without due process. Remember people shouting at Ted Cruz in the restaurant, we believe survivors, we believe survivors. Well, this is the thing. And, and it's not just Avenatti. I mean, Avenatti is a small part of this. It's the entire infrastructure that supported him. He was on CNN so many times that now CNN is sitting around going, what do we do? They're just staring at the camera at CNN without Michael Avenatti to come on and accuse Donald Trump without proof. They're just staring at the camera without him to bring on what well, I can't. I think her name was Julie, Julia Swetnick, uh, to make these absurd comments that they went with without any kind of corroboration. Blasey Ford, who testified, had no corroboration. All the people she named said it didn't happen. And yet and yet we heard again and again. Well, let me show you what we heard. Stephen Colbert was among the people who brought Avenatti on his show to basically kind of glorify him and make him a character. I mean, Stephen Colbert has turned his audience into a mob. They scream and cheer every time he mentions impeaching the president. This isn't healthy. It isn't healthy that an entertainer, a guy who's supposed to make us laugh, who's supposed to make all of us laugh, has now focused in on, again, another celebrity. Can you save us, Britney Spears? Can you save us, Stephen Colbert? And now he brings on Lady Gaga, right? She's Lady Gaga, and, and this is nothing against her. It's nothing against her talent or anything like that. She must have been uh, promoting her movie, the, A Star is Born. Colbert brings her on to discuss Christine Blasey Ford's charges about Brett Kavanaugh. I want you to remember this. He not only brought on Michael Avenatti, but he brought on Lady Gaga to talk about this. Here's the cut. It's cut six. 
I will, I will tell you something because I am a sexual assault survivor. And the truth is that, you know, like Trump the other day was speaking in a rally and he said, she has no memory of how she got to the party. You know, should we trust that she remembers the assault? And the answer is yes. Can you save us, Britney Spears? Can we be saved? God, why is Satan controlling the universe? If Stephen Colbert should have Satan on, so Satan try. That's the thing. Lady Gaga comes on, uses the power of her celebrity, the sympathy, the empathy that she's a sexual assault victim, which we all empathize with, right? There is no constituency for sexual assault in America. She uses that, and Stephen Colbert uses that to slander Brett Kavanaugh, to say Brett Kavanaugh does not deserve due process, simple due process, because she was attacked. Therefore, we should believe Christine Blasey Ford. It makes no sense. It makes no sense to believe all survivors, or, or as we should say, it makes no sense to believe all accusers. Yet here are these celebrities, Stephen Colbert and Lady Gaga, trying to affect your mind when we see from the Juliet Lewis Instagram art what celebrities really are damaged people working out their damage through creating art hey it's a good use for your damage we're all damaged in some way it is a good use to create art with it but it doesn't make you an expert on jack diddly squats stephen colbert every day in the new york times it says what are the late night comedians saying well since they're all saying the same thing and since they're all saying the same thing that the new york times is saying who cares what they're saying who cares what a comedian says who cares why should a michael avenatti a guy who is a uh, a lawyer who will say anything for his client to defend his client, be allowed to come on CNN 500 times just because they hate the president. I mean, we should be asking ourselves these things. And luckily, a lot of people are asking themselves these things. You know, the Federalist had a story about the fact that uh, it says, as voting data pours in, this is by Angelo Morabito in The Federalist, as voting data pours in, a trend emerges. Celebrities are great at getting press attention. They're great at getting people to the polls. They're not great, however, at driving the electoral outcomes they want. In Texas, Georgia, and Tennessee, the three states with the most net noticeable celebrity involvement all saw, saw their highest midterm voter turnout levels, but the voters in all three states chose the unflashy Republicans over the celebrity-backed Democratic candidates. So the, the irony here is, is twofold. You know, first of all, I, I should mention, by the way, the Stormy Daniels released a statement on Michael Avenatti's arrest saying these are serious and obviously very troubling allegations. But right now, that's all they are, allegations. We should all reserve judgment until the investigation and investigation Michael has said he welcomes is complete. And that's what I'm going to do. So suddenly everybody on the left is withholding judgment. But the irony is also something else. The irony is how often, how often men who say they are feminists end up in a jam over women. Harvey Weinstein, one of the big spokesmen for women. Uh, Bill Clinton, one of the big spokesmen for women. The other day, the guy who allegedly shouted filthy uh, obscenities at Tucker Carlson's 19-year-old daughter. Remember, she was in the country club and she went to the ladies' room. And as she was coming back, this guy at the bar, a middle-aged man at the bar, started, said, is that do you know Tucker Carlson? She said, that's my dad. And he started spewing this hideous filth at her. And remember, just get that in your mind, right? This is a grown up man shouting at a 19 year old girl, spewing filth at a 19 year old girl. So it turns out this guy is serves on the board of directors of a women's mental health group called the Women's Initiative. How often does this happen? And I think the, re the reason is, is that feminism itself is a destructive force for women, is a destructive force against women. One of the great propaganda campaigns in American history is the way that feminism has convinced women that it, it means, its dictionary definition is things that are good for women, right? What is good for women is free market, free minds. What is good for women is being included in the promises of the uh, Declaration of Independence, the idea that it, not just all men are created equal, but all women also are created equal, which it has come to mean as well it should. What is good for women is that kind of liberalism, what, what is called classical liberalism. Feminism itself is just a mess. And it's not, it's not an accident that so many male feminists turn out to be abusers.